February day. Here at Hope Valley Farm in South Alabama. This is Ray Gimbogan. We are testing out a double combination of bits. So if she looks a little low in the pole or closed up today, I will not be at all surprised. Um, she does not have a lot of room in her mouth. She has a very uh, short lip. So I have a combination in her mouth of a simple single jointed egg butt snaffle burdoon. I believe it's a 14 mil. Um, and I have the more slot Neuschule um, Weymouth. It's a 12 mil. And uh, we seem to have a good ride in it on Friday of last week. So I wanted to give it another go. She is eight, so um, perfectly old enough to be carrying around a set of doubles. Um, I like to have a thicker Verdun on her, I believe. Still not 100% on this set, but I believe I want a thicker Verdun on her because of how she does um, get inconsistent in the bridle sometimes. Um, and that will even happen in her snaffle if she's a little bit emotional or upset in the work. So um, having a thicker burdoon I think is going to be helpful. Um, she also seems to go better in a single jointed snaffle rather than the double jointed like a three piece. Um, had her in a three-piece egg butt snaffle before and it feels like it's just a lot in her mouth and then again size and confirmation of her mouth play a role in all of that um, so we're just trying to figure out what's going to be the best option for her um, if you've been following her, you know that she's been schooling most of the developing pre-St. George as well as the FEI pre-St. George. Um, we just have little bits here and there, submission issues. Um, and we've been working very hard on taking care of those appropriately. And um, so far it's been going very well. Um, I don't know that I'll be able to do it today, but last week we had um, three, four time changes across the short diagonals. And so if we can do that on a short diagonal, I would think that the five changes on the long diagonal will be just fine for fours and threes. Um, so we shall see. I just came back from on the levels symposium with Janet Foy in Ocala this past weekend. So feeling pretty good about our training program here and how we're developing horses. So i um, just going to continue on with that. And um, hopefully as Reagan gets stronger and 
more comfortable in the work, the submission issues will disintegrate just because she's maturing more. So eight is still pretty young for this level of work. So I'm not very concerned. I'm just testing things every day and addressing straightness issues, addressing whatever whatever comes up. All right, so we've been walking for probably uh, 12 or so minutes now, I would believe. So I'll go ahead and warm up in the trot. I've been experimenting with her, going a little lower in the warm up. If you've followed some of my videos previously, I had her in more of a training level type frame in the warm up to keep her higher in the pull. I'm not a hundred percent that I like her there. So again, it's just testing her out and as she matures, all of those things can change. And like I said, this is a new bidding system, so we may be inconsistent to fairly inconsistent in the bridle. Again, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to try and keep a forward feel for her. Good girl. Something else that I am starting to do with her in the warm up is playing a little bit with varying the tempo ever so slightly in her gates. Um, before I have felt that that has actually geared her up too much for the warm up. But now I'm trying different things to help her understand that the work is ever changing and that is okay. Slightly sluggish sideways, but pretty good on the forward. There we go. That's a little bit better off of my right leg. So, again, you know, my weakness is the collapse in my shoulders. And since I know that, from the very beginning here, oh, good girl. Good girl. I'm thinking my scapula is down and back. And that's just my scapula. That doesn't mean that my back has to get hollow, which is what happens a lot of times. If you tell someone, good girl, someone to get straight, they often hollow out their lower back instead of just straightening out their shoulders. So I want to keep my lower back straight and my scapula together and down, together and down. And I'm going to utilize my horse's rhythm to emphasize that in my brain. Good. Good. So all of those 
changes of tempo, however subtle or not so subtle they may be, or on purpose. Good girl. And of course, I've got to keep in mind to engage my core. So that as I rise, I'm not leaving my hips out of the equation. I'm bringing them with my abs. That's a good girl. Change a little bit forward here, just a touch, and rise taller for slowing down. Good. Gander is where she will get really low and behind me. what I can do to help her. Going a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. Just very carefully changing the tempo here in this first canter. creating moments to let go. I don't want her feeling that I need to hold her in any moment. I want her, even in a stretch, to develop that type of self-carriage. I want that in her head. Taking over. So we're going to trot. We're going to trot. <laughs> she was ready for a walk. And again, my elbows are going to be where I want to feel the weight of the connection. My hands a little fast. Thank you. My hands should belong to the mouth. My elbows should belong to me. So I'm going to try and ride with that type of purpose in the connection. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Make sure that I use my corners even when I'm stretching a little longer but then a little shorter. Create the space that you can let go. And it doesn't always have to be a literal letting go. It can be just a little give on the rein that the horse can take more of. Wait. Now go a little. 
create that space that you can let go when you come back. That's what teaches self-care, not just holding on to them. We're going to trot. We're going to trot. She likes to take over in the diagonal lines a lot. No problem. I know that it's there. So I just deal with it however best I can. You always have to address it a little bit. But you have to be able to breathe with your horse. Good. So, in the warm-ups, I don't always school the changes anymore um, because that's where she can tend to get a large right change is when she's just allowed to be long and low and I don't want to take the low away from her because I feel like it's kind of necessary for developing her neck and sometimes she would like to come behind my hand and a little too low and I'll try to give her a correction up with my seat first and if I need to do a little lifting with my torso that then translates into my elbow I'll do that but if possible I'll just give her a little push from my seat bones and just say hey take up some space up in the front Good. So, it is a Monday, so we're not going to school a whole lot of fancy stuff. Like I said, I was gone this weekend, so the last bit that she got actual real work was on Thursday, and we just played around on Friday. So, um, we're going to see if we can do a little bit of more collection in the canter, work with the changes a little bit, and um, probably nothing too brilliant, but um, to me that's okay. I feel like I've gotten her to a point, we'll see, she may make a liar out of me on a Monday. Um, I feel like I've gotten her to the point where she's starting to get more comfortable with the aids and not quite as um, abrupt in trying something, anything. Um, so I'm quite happy with that and Later on, I will develop some expression back into things. But for right now, if it's just a flat line pre-St. George movement where you feel like your grandma could get on and sit, then I'm perfectly happy with that. I know that she has scope in her movement, but I just want her comfortable and relaxed for right now. Oh. All right. The uh, right lead can sometimes be her trickier lead. So I like to start with that first because sometimes I think it is a strength issue for her and I like to think that if she has a little bit more energy 
to the right, then she has a little bit more energy to do the right thing to the right. So, we'll try it and we'll find out. Make sure that my half ounce means something. A half halt is literally half of a halt. So don't complicate that aid. If you feel like maybe your horse is going to be heavy on your half halt, then practice some halts. Do the whole halt. And make sure that your horse is understanding of the aid. Now you see me breathing a little bit on that rein, and I know that she's not square. There we go. Coming a little bit more from my seat. That's mostly what I'm concerned about. Um, it's a little harder in our arena. Unfortunately, we don't have mirrors yet, but um, it's a little harder to practice square halts without mirrors. So again, just a little connection submission issue, whatever. It doesn't bother me. That's why. Good girl. So you see there, I didn't have to use any reinforcements through my torso or through my elbow or hand. It all came off of my seat stopping. Here, I'm going to have to use some. And my thigh locking the shoulder movement. I'm big on these halts. I'm big on the response of the half halt because I know how strong these animals are. I don't want to be the one that has to go around my whole test with a mouth open because I'm holding them back. I'm going to be able to ride with, like I said, my hand belonging to their mouth and that way I can have a quiet mouth. Now it's a little sluggish but these past three ones were a lot better. Good. For her to breathe like that out, I don't know if you heard it or not big deal to me. And again, we're going for canter work, but I want to make sure that my half halt's going to work in the canter. That was the best way to make sure that your half halt is going to work. Don't do half of it. Do a whole halt. So again, you're going to see the curve rain pretty loose on her because we are testing out this bidding system. It is not a perfect connection. I'm well aware of that. But that's better. But we're trying. So that's better. Good. I'll we'll walk out of this one. Downhill tendency in the stride after. I don't mind. So, we're going to test the half halts now because we're going to go a little on this side of the circle. We're going to go, there we go. Now we're going to come back. Oh, got to fuse connection. That's not ideal. I open my thigh, we go a little. I close my thigh, we should come back without me having to use half ounce through the reins, ideally. Go. 
a little close my thigh come back now for her when she came up in the pole there we go I don't really mind that was pretty good so we're just going to change things a little bit on her change positioning I'm going to stay back on my seat bone launches it on the circle that's right so her shoulders creating the space to let go creating the space to let go her shoulders are going to stay on the circle line haunches are in bending in the direction of the lead that we're working on creating the space to let go staying in the middle of the tack I'm not going off to the left side and pushing the haunches in that's going to throw her off balance good good allow her to straighten haunches in on the circle staying in the middle of the tack scapula together and down good creating the space to let go working on getting the circle a little smaller oops lost the shoulders no problem that was an inside leg issue there we go creating the space that I can let go in inside like this you good none of it is bad though training happens when you or the horse make a mistake there. Good. And again, listen to my half hop and walk. Good. <clears throat> you guys will have to excuse me. I'm a little stuffy and still getting over a cold. Um, <clears throat> so when she was making those little forward mistakes right there. The worst thing that I could have done I booted her with the spur. I said, you go forward and you stay here. What did I do? I allowed the circle to get a little larger. Tried to keep the haunches in. If I felt like that was going to be too much, I allowed a moment of straightness. We got the canter back. We went forward again. And then you relax and you just say, can you take the weight again? And you just keep testing it until you get a good reaction. It's not necessary for me to get a full half pirouette on a Monday with an eight-year-old who's schooling over the pre-St. George. <laughs> Reagan agrees, no. Um, now, could I have made a half pirouette happened probably. It probably would have only been a five or a six, though, according to a judging scale. I'm not interested in fives or sixes. Um, so that's why we're schooling the pirouettes by using the haunches in, by using the half halts. So, we'll go to the left now, and we're just going to do the same thing. You notice that when I started the haunches in, it did not immediately go into a smaller circle. I kept it on the 20 meter circle and just said, can you have your haunches in? 
Now, can you add a little bit more bend into the haunches in? I don't know if you noticed that it was a gradual development and that's what all of training should be. You should never just surprise the horse with something that you're doing with him or her, as the case may be, right? All right. So again, the connection issues, I'm hoping as she gets more comfortable with holding the two bits, that's very good, except for dropping your head. Um, as she gets more comfortable with holding the two bits, I'm hoping that they will go away while she's on it on this side. All right, good. Um, big thing with horses like this is that you don't bore them to tears. So, <laughs> so to the right, we had to do a few of these full halt transitions in order for her to appreciate fully what we were talking about doing. And then we were able to carry on to the left probably because we already schooled a bit right. We're feeling much more amiable about it. Just add a little moment of confusion. I actually asked for the canter. She thought I meant trot. Good. So we'll just school that for a second. She's allowed to have little misunderstandings like that as I'm also trying to refine my aids a little bit more. And uh, you see her come up like that. I'd almost rather her, the type of horse that she is, have that reaction than going too far down. But. And again, if I'm having trouble getting the canter from a walk cleanly, creating space to let go here. She's just against my hand a little bit. If I'm having trouble getting the canter clearly from a walk, there we go, good girl. What business do I have with carrying on to collect the canter? Absolutely none. So, I'm going to open my thigh, we're going to go a little bit, close my thigh, we're going to come back a little bit, a little too much, it's alright, open my thigh, we're going to go a little bit, close my thigh, we're going to come back a little, there we go bones for me. Now, launches in on the left circle. Creating space to let go. Creating space to let go. She's going to get powerful. I'm going to sit in the middle of the tack. And I'm going to create that spot. Good. I'm going to allow her to straighten for a minute. It's pretty good. We're going to do haunches in again. Create the space to let go. Good. Haunches in. Try not to lean to the outside. Stay in the middle of your tack. Scapula together and down. As you bring the circle smaller. Good. Good. She didn't give up on me, so that was really good for her. She got very small there. 
so it wasn't necessarily ideal for a pirouette. But I felt like she was trying to understand how to take the weight. Which for her, understanding is everything. So that was great. Good. So we're going to try just a few changes on a short diagonal, going for three fours. If we have a counting issue, it's probably my fault, so I'm not going to be worried about it. probably going to take a circle here. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good. That was better. Don't care. Oh, two. Three. I'd much rather do that than come back on to a change that's going to be too big. So we're not going to worry about it. I'm just going to try the canter again. No problem. So here, when she gets stuck, I'm just going to leg yield, and we're going to go on. Try and just move the feet. she's not listening to, that's the one that we're going to address. Good. Good. I'm not going to get into a fight with her. So again, not wanting to respond to that leg. So we like it. Got a little discombobulated, so I'll let her walk for a second. 
I don't want her to hate it, but I do want her to learn that she's not in control of it. So, by changing the lines, I can make sure that I'm the one that she wants to do half steps, that I'm the one that can be in control. And again, I'm thinking the whole time about creating a space that I can let go in. Pretty rude on those sides. Then I'm gonna flex and like it. Flex and like it. And canter. Keep moving. Who cares? Let's get her off of that leg that she's really wanting to fight on. Oh, wherever she is. Let her have a walk after that because it was quiet. And we're going to think. Even though it was hard to get halfway across the diagonal. We still made the changes happen. As you can see, she's got lovely changes. Mentally, she is kind of stuck in this realm of, all right, I'm just going to go forward. It's one leg, then the other leg, and you know, it's a lot. And that's fine. So patience is key whenever you're talking about a training issue. That's okay. We just got a little confused here. Oh. 
Whoops. Going to canter. Yep. Yeah. She has problems staying straight. Good. Thank you. Yep, she wants me to turn into a pulling match, but I'm not going to bite it. I'm going to say, I don't really care where your head and neck are. Create the space to let go. Good. We'll let her walk for that one again. Was it perfect? No. But did she have to try? Yes. Did she rise to the occasion? Yes. As far as what her capabilities are that she feels that she has? Yes. Now, would have been nicer if we could have cantered out of the corner absolutely but i'm not worried about that i'm just worried about can i change i know i can change once we have that and we have it really nice and quiet but can we change multiple times and keep that nice and quiet that is the question i'm not even counting anymore you know my goal when I started was you know, to have the three fours across the short diagonal and so I started off counting I'm no longer counting I'm just saying can I keep you straight can I put this leg on and you can't turn this direction Good girl. So for her, now I know her nose was probably in her chest, but for her, she allowed me to create a space where I could let go. She allowed me to put my leg on when I wanted to, and she responded with the change. So that was all that I needed. And if you notice, she came out of that diagonal a lot straighter. She followed my seat aid a lot better because of what I was doing when she got stuck. Whenever she got stuck, it was either mostly off of my left leg aid. So we leg yielded right. You know, and she has to respond to that aid, the seat bones, the weight, the leg aid, all of that. It means something. And when you make it about the aid, it doesn't become about the changes. So you see, it didn't mess up the changes. In fact, it made them better. And it's with that type of training that we can actually get her going a little bit more into the tempi changes. Good. So we'll end with a little trot work and then a little stretch. Probably keep the trot work pretty short since we had a little bit of a misunderstanding. But as you can see, it didn't require kicking her, didn't require pulling on her, yanking on her, anything like that. It just required staying straight 
in the saddle addressing the aids that she was ignoring and then it made a lot more sense to her and you have to take breaks you know even after you know um not so perfect tries you have to take breaks they are not going to learn when they're tired and especially her you know we still consider in dressage eight years old to be fairly young so scapula together and down megan so for her strength is going to be a reoccurring issue probably for the next few years because we're going to be continuously developing her into hopefully a Grand Prix horse. That's our hope. Again, I'm going to check my half outs by schooling a halt. And I would like for a respectful good girl, respectful send off. Can we show a little half step in the middle here and then go for a little medium? Because I'm trying to take my mediums up a knot and her collected trot create the space to let go and then you must let go especially with a horse that wants to take you forward collect create the space let go create the space let go But that's only if they don't listen to your seat. So you have to put that on first. I think this time she'll have it. a lot better. Yeah. So we'll go back to stretch. And again in the stretch, I want to create the contact that I want her to go to. She is not a stretchy horse. Just because she goes behind the vertical makes stretching for her correctly very hard good another thing that makes it hard for her is can kind of hear every now and then I'm not sure if it's the bits or if it's her teeth but like right there you can kind of hear that clicking sound so I'm not sure if it's uncomfortable to stretch sometimes
I know it's important for her to space to let go. All right, so typical Monday. Had some issues with the submission and the changes. Submission to the aids, specifically more on my left leg than anything else. It's all right. You address the left aid and keep her moving forward. Use some lateral suppleness to help encourage her to move her feet. Lots of breaks whenever you can. Creating space to let go and then letting go and just making sure that she understands when she's done a good job. So it really is just understanding that we sometimes lack right now. So anyway, we'll keep experimenting with this bidding combination. I'm actually pretty happy with it today. Um, I think when she gets more and more comfortable with it. Um, we'll start to see her be able to keep her pole a little bit higher. But um, we will see you guys later.